Okay, we're going to factor this out and notice that we have four terms, right? And can we still factor out a GCF from all these four terms? Let's talk about the number first. Can we think about a number that goes into 15, 35, 9, and 21? 3, the 3 work. Well, we know 3 goes into 15, 3 goes into 9, 3 goes into 21, but unfortunately, 3 does not go into 35, right? Hmm, so in terms of numbers, I don't think there's any besides the number 1. But if you want to factor out 1, you get back the original, so it doesn't do us any good. Okay, how about variable? Well, here we have x squared, here we have x, here we have x, y, so it does have the x. But unfortunately, for the last term right here, it doesn't have an x. So we can now factor out an x. And you see that the first two terms, they don't have a y. So we cannot factor out the y neither. Well, in this case, what can we do? It seems that we cannot do anything at the moment because we are looking for all four terms, right? This is the second technique. Well, when you have four terms, when we cannot factor anything out from all four terms, try this. This is called the factor by grouping. We are going to look at the first two terms like this. And be sure to draw on the lines for the, the moment. We are not, and in fact, we don't have the right to put on parentheses yet, okay? I will show you uh, in the next example why the parentheses is forbidden. Let's focus on the first two terms, and then we'll focus on the second two terms, okay? Well, imagine I don't have the second two terms, I just have that. 15x squared minus 35x. Can we factor something out? Yes. In terms of a number, well, we know 5 goes into 15. 5 goes into 35, right? So we can factor out a 5. So I'm going to put this down right here. And you can also write this down as 5 times 3 and 5 times 7 on the top of it. But then that was in my previous video. This one, I'm just going to show you. This is how I like to think about this kind of factoring right here, okay? So 5 goes into 15, right? And 5 goes into 35. That's why we put on the 5. And for the number, that's it. But how about the x? This is x to the first. This is x squared. So we picked up x to the first. And now we open a parenthesis for the leftover. Originally, we had a 15, but then we factor out a 5. So we have a 3 left. This was x squared, but we took 1 out, right? So we have x to the first left. And then bring down the minus, and this was 35 earlier, but then we factored the out of 5. 35 divided by 5 is 7. And this x is out already, so this is it. And this is how I have to think about it if we don't want to write down the numbers on top of it. Alright, so we are done for this part here. And now, look at the second two terms right here. In terms of the numbers, 9 and 21. We know 3 is the GCF. 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 21, right? And before we do anything, you see that we have a plus sign in front of this term, right? You must write this down. You must write this down. And I don't mind to say that one more time. You must write down whatever this sign is right here before we do anything. Bring down that plus sign. And then you see that 3 goes into 9, 3 goes into 21. I will put down the 3 right here, okay? How about variable-wise? x, y, and this has y, so we can factor out a y, right? And then let me open the parentheses. This term originally had a 9, but we factor out 3. 9 divided by 3, we have 3. The x, well, we didn't factor out any x, so we have the x left. The y is out already. So no more y. Bring down the minus. Originally, we had 21. We factor out a 3. 21 divided by 3, we have 7. This y is out already, so no more. This is it for this part at the moment, right? Okay, now here is the cool part. As you can see, we have the 5x in red times this quantity plus 3y in red times this quantity. Notice that whatever we have in the parentheses, they are exactly the same. And technically, when you are multiplying, this is considered one big term. This is also considered one big term. This is a factor, this is also a factor, and in fact, they are the same. They are the common factor. 
With that being said, what we can do is we can put that down. We can factor it out. And I'd like to show you guys the common factor. We will put it down first. We will factor out the 3x minus 7. And be sure, this is only to the first power because we only have both of them being to the first power. Okay? And then we will open the parentheses for the left over. Originally this, we factor this out right here already. So we have the 5x. And then for this part here, we have the plus in between. So let's put on the plus. Be sure you must have this plus right here. Because we are going to add the 3y right here. And this was out already. And this is it. This factor times this factor. And this is factoring for the original. If you take this and then distribute it out, fold it out, multiply it out, you will get back to the original. And now let's check out the next example. I will just do one specifically for this kind of situation for you guys. Okay, let's look at this one. And you see that technically we only have one, two, two terms. And you see that this parentheses and that parentheses, whatever we have inside, they are exactly the same, right? And be sure, even though we have this parentheses and we have this in front, right? The direction is telling us to factor as much as possible. With that being said, do not take this and multiply in because we are trying to factor it. Likewise, do not take the 3 and multiply it in. We are not multiplying, we are trying to factor it, okay? And this is what we can do. That's all. This and that are exactly the same, right? And we can just factor it out first. We'll put it down y minus 14. And keep in mind, just like what I showed you guys earlier, only put this down one time. And then you see that the 2xy is a leftover for the first term. So put down 2xy, and then we add it with the 3. This is the second term, technically. And this right here is it. This is how you factor whenever you're trying to do grouping, you end up with the parentheses, parentheses, this kind of situation. Once again, be sure when you factor this out, it's only to the first power, and be sure to write down whatever is left right here. And of course, I'll box this, and then I'll show you another one. Okay, let's factor this out, and you see that once again, we have four terms, right? And look at the numbers, 6, 27, 10, and 45. We cannot factor out any common numbers besides 1, right? So it doesn't do us any good. And in terms of the variables, this doesn't have an x, so we cannot factor anything out. So the grouping is a good choice. And the hint is that whenever you see four terms, grouping is the way to go. And we will group the first two together with the underline, okay? And then we'll also group the second two together with the underline. And here is an example on why we cannot put down parentheses at the moment. And let me write it down again right here for you guys. So suppose this is the original, right? And if you want to group them with the parentheses and you just put down the first parentheses like this. In fact, this is okay because we have technically just a positive one in front. So if you multiply it out, same thing, okay. But then if you decided to put parentheses right here, this is totally wrong. It's not the same as the original anymore because you have this negative in front. So with this parentheses, you are technically telling me that you will have to multiply this in and then you will end up negative 10x, but then negative times negative becomes plus 45. Originally, we didn't have plus 45. This is just minus, right? This is why I tell you guys to use underlines. Do not put down parentheses on the very first line. So now let's come back here and we are going to look at the first two terms. We have 6 and 27. What can we factor out? 3, right? So we will begin to put this down. We will factor out a 3. And in terms of the variable x, we can do this is x to the third power, this is x squared. So x squared, right? And we will open a parentheses. Originally, we had a 6, but then we factor out 3. So we have 2 left. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So we put down 2 right here. This was x to the third power, but we took out 2 of them. 3 minus 2 is x to the first power. And then this, originally it was 27. Divided by 3, you get 9, so plus 9. This x squared is out, so this is it. Close the parentheses. And then for the second two term right here, B 
before you do anything, remember, write down this sign. So we have to put down the minus right here. And now we can talk. 10 and 45. What can we do? 5, right? So I'm going to put down 5 right here. This has an x, but this has no x, so well, the 5 is the only thing we can do. And then we'll open a parenthesis, right? Originally here, this is a negative 10x, but then technically we factored it out a negative 5. Well, negative 10 divided by negative 5, we get plus d2. And the x right here stays. Okay? And then this originally was negative 45, right? But then we factored it out a negative 5. Negative 45 divided by negative 5, we get positive 9. This is the plus 9. So in fact, this parenthesis and that parenthesis, once again, they match. Okay? But be sure to do each and every step really, really carefully. And this is just what I showed you guys earlier in example number 4. I will put down this one first. 2x plus 9 is only to the first power. And then I'll open the parentheses. I'll put down the leftover, which will have the 3x squared, and then the minus and the 5. And we are done. This is it.